Hi there, this is Leonard from Cosmic Sound and welcome to a very special presentation in our studio series of videos. Um, now over the last couple of years we've brought you a lot of different videos showing you specific products or comparing particular products within a certain product range. And what I wanted to do today is bring all this together and just give you an inclusive video that explains everything you're going to need to have in your home studio. So before we even get started on hardware, let's just take a look at your room. Think about this very carefully. Now most people are going to be putting this in just a small spare room in their house, but even if you're going to do this, just a couple of things to make sure that you do. The first thing is make sure you don't put your setup in a corner. So what that essentially means is don't put your speakers in the corner. Um, and the reason for this is that bass tends to collect in corners. So you'll find that if you do put your entire setup in a corner, um, that your bass perception uh, might be distorted and the sound that you get is not true. Um, other than this, there are a couple of other things you might want to do, which is to break up the walls. Um, you can do this with acoustic treatment, as you can see in the room that I'm sitting now. If you can't afford acoustic treatment, you can do this simply by using shelving, cupboards, couches, anything that can be used to break up the wall or indeed absorb sound can be helpful. So let's break it down. The first thing you're going to need in any computer-based studio is, of course, a computer. Um, now, I don't want to get into Mac versus PC um, debate here, but um, just to make sure, whatever platform you go for, make sure that when you build it, it is built specifically for music. You have as um, powerful a CPU as you can possibly afford and as much RAM as you can afford to put into it. Um, you can use a laptop or a desktop machine. Um, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's as high spec as possible. And if you can, make sure that you keep it specifically for music. So once you've got your computer sorted, you're going to need some software on it, of course. Now, there are a lot of products on the market. For this, best to check out our software comparison video that we've already done, and that will explain how you can best choose the software that's right for your situation. So the other thing you're going to need software-wise is something to generate sounds. Most software packages will come loaded with heaps of sounds and instruments, um, but you often find that you don't have the ones that you need, and it's in this case that you want to expand your library, and that's where a program like Complete comes in very handy. There have obviously been a pretty long series of these. They're up to the eighth version now, and this one is the ultimate version that comes on its own hard drive. Um, this will give you a number of tools from synths to instruments such as pianos, guitars, uh, band instruments, orchestral instruments. So it gives you heaps of tools to get sounds happening within your software. Um, other than that, you might want to invest in some extra software plugins such as effects, um, or you might be content just to use the ones that come with your audio workstation software. So your next issue is going to be how to get sound in and out of your computer. Um, and this is where an audio interface comes in. Now, every computer will have an audio interface built into it already in the form of an internal sound card, but please bear in mind this thing is not designed for audio production. So you're best to get your hands on an audio interface of some description. Um, the one I've got here is the RME Fireface 400, and this is a very good one, um, but you'll find you can get them as cheap as $150 and they may go up to thousands. Um, just to give you an idea of what they're going to do, um, the first thing they're going to do is take inputs. This might be a guitar or other instrument, it might be a microphone, and convert that signal to digital information that a computer can process. On the out stage, what it'll do is send the sound out to your speakers so you can monitor back and produce. So the advantage of having an external sound card is that the converters from digital back to analog are much better quality than what you'll find in an internal sound card and the result of this is that it'll make it much easier for you to mix and it's a lot more accurate. So when you are sitting there trying to produce, all those sounds will leap out at you a lot more than they will uh, using your internal sound card. So just one additional thing to mention on the topic of audio interfaces. Um, if you're a recording producer and you're wanting to record lots of instruments, then you're going to want to look at an interface that has got enough preamps for you. And usually, if you're going to be doing something like drum micing, you're going to want to get one like this. Uh, it's going to give you a full eight mic preamps on the back, um, as well as some extra line inputs and outputs, so you can run this however you want. Um, and it'll give you the p potential to plug in as many devices as you're going to need at one time. Uh, just one thing to be aware of with these is that when you, when you have an interface with heaps of preamps on it, it's usually going to be Firewire, so just make sure you have a Firewire port on your computer if you're going to want to use one of these. So the next stage from your audio interface is to get the sound out to something that's going to enable you to hear back what you're doing. Um, and this is going to be a set of studio monitors. Um, we already have a video online that compares specific brands of studio monitors, so if you want to get a more detailed look at this, please check out that video. 
but just to give you an idea of what you're going to be looking for, you want a set of speakers that are totally flat, that give you the clearest possible response, um, so that it enables you to mix your music to the best of your ability. Um, make sure you keep them at ear level. They're also going to be near field monitors, so make sure they're close to your head. Best way to do this is to create an equilateral triangle between the two speakers and you. Um, and if you can't get the height right, a good idea is to get yourself some studio monitor stands and position them just behind your desk. Um, it's also always a good idea to have some monitor pads to put your speakers on and that'll also help with your sound. So another addition to your output setup may be a good set of studio monitoring headphones like these. These ones are made by KRK. There are lots of different ones on the market. Um, there are a few considerations to take into account when buying a set of studio headphones and the primary one is going to be what you're going to use them for. So often with a microphone setup you'll want to give the person singing or playing a set of headphones so they can monitor back to what they're doing. Um, if you're going to do that make sure they're a set of closed back headphones and that means the sound won't leak out. Um, closed back headphones however are not the best type if you're going to be using them to produce your music. Um, and the reason for that is that semi-open headphones, which is the other type, uh, generally get better bass response and a less distorted sense of stereo image. So if you're going to use your headphones for producing, especially if you can't afford a set of studio monitors right now and you're just going to have a set of headphones, get yourself a good set of semi-open headphones. Um, if you're going to use them for recording um, and put them on a person that's actually um, playing an instrument or singing, get yourself some closed back. Of course, if you can't afford two sets of headphones and you have to only get one, then just make sure you get yourself a really nice set of closed back headphones. So now we've taken a look at ways of getting sounds out of your computer, let's talk about getting them in. So to start with software options, um, we mentioned programs such as Complete before, software synthesizers and other instruments that you might have inside your computer. Well, of course, you're going to need some way to control them, and that's where a controller like a keyboard comes in. So right now I've got a piano loaded in Logic's EXS sampler, and you'll see I can play a chord with it. So what this does is just makes it a bit more human. Your other option if you don't have a keyboard is simply to input note data by clicking notes on with your mouse. But obviously this gives you a much more human way of playing and it's going to give you a lot more feel if you record things in. Um, these come in a variety of different sizes and forms, so if you want to check some out, best thing to do is have a look at our keyboard comparison that we already have out on YouTube. Um, but just to go briefly into it, if you're simply wanting to input lead or bass parts, you may only need a small controller. If you're looking at in inputting more detailed parts, or especially if you're a keyboard player, you might want to invest in a bigger keyboard, such as a 49 note like this one, or even a 61. Um, another consideration on your controller is going to be things like knobs, if you wanted to control in real time um, parameters in your plugins, and also pads. So this can be useful if you want to program your own drum parts. Um, as an add-on idea to that, you might want to look at something like Native Instruments Machine. Um, it comes with a, its own software and the controller and is very useful for composing your own beats. So if you are interested in Machine, then please check out our Machine In Depth and Machine Micro videos online. So the next thing you're going to need to get sounds into your computer is going to be a microphone. Now this will be primarily used by people that are going to do recording, this might be acoustic or electric music, um, but even for electronic music producers you may want to get some sort of analog sound or indeed record vocals. So what are you going to need out of a microphone? Generally if you're going to be wanting to record things like vocals and guitars, um, and you only want to buy one microphone, the most popular choice will be a condenser microphone. Um, these are the most sensitive type of microphones that you can get. Um, they do require a power source as well, so make sure that either your microphone preamp or your audio interface has phantom power on it, and that will make sure that you can get sound out of your condenser microphone. Um, there are two other types of microphones that may commonly be used, which are dynamic mics and ribbon mics. Um, these have different applications, particularly if you're going to be doing things like drum miking. Um, you may want to have a couple of these in your arsenal as well, but just make sure you've got yourself one really good condenser mic. Um, make sure that you also consider what you're going to be doing with it, and then based on that, check out whether you're going to need things with switchable polar patterns as well. So one final point on microphones, there are a couple of accessories that are going to be very important to you. Uh, the first one is a microphone stand, so I mentioned these are very sensitive microphones. You cannot handhold them, um, they will transmit noise, you'll also see most of them come in a cradle or a shock mount they're often called. This is again to prevent noise from being transmitted through the microphone. Um, the final thing you're going to need is a pop filter if you're going to be recording vocals. This prevents P's and S sounds from coming through strongly on your recordings that can be uh, quite harsh, so make sure you get yourself a good pop filter. 
Another thing to consider when you're using a microphone is just making sure that only the sound that you want to get into the microphone is getting there. Um, you may live on a residential street with heaps of traffic noise or indeed you might just be in a room that's particularly reflective and you might be getting sounds that you don't want to hear. Um, the best way to treat this is to get yourself a good reflection filter and this is essentially just a piece of acoustic foam um, that sits behind the microphone and comes around it and makes sure that rear reflections are stopped from uh, entering it. Um, this will just ensure that you have the best quality recording as possible without having any unwanted sounds added to it. We also have a detailed microphone comparison video online, so if you want to get some more information on that, please check that out. So another point to consider when you're looking at microphones is going to be preamps. So just to explain a small thing of what these do, um, basically a microphone turns an analog source into a very, very minute electrical signal. Um, that then, then needs to be amplified before it can be recorded, and that's exactly what a preamp does. So these come in various qualities. You'll get preamps that are built into your audio interfaces, um, but sometimes these might not be good enough for your purpose, and that's when you're going to go and buy yourself an external microphone preamp. So we carry lots of these in stock as well, but they're all suited to different needs. But just to give you a brief idea, you can get things by Universal Audio, uh, Charter Oak, Art, uh, Aphex, PreSonus, there are lots of different options here. You can get tube ones or solid state ones, depending on what type of sound you need. So have a very careful think about whether you're going to need to get yourself a separate microphone preamp, as these can really enhance your sound. So we've been talking about home studios and what you need to get your home studio up and running. Um, there are a few things I haven't mentioned, which is mostly on having um, other outboard gear, such as compressors, limiters, uh, external effects processing units. Um, these are certainly things that you can look at adding on to your basic setup, but they're not essentials and you don't need them to get started. Um, you'll find a lot of this stuff can be done by the software you're going to be using, and often they'll just be stock features of the software that you have. Um, so I've mentioned quite a lot of different things today. Um, don't feel like you need to have them all at once. Um, everyone has to start somewhere and it's fine to get these things one at a time. Probably the most essential ones is having a computer, having some software on it, and then if you can get yourself some good studio monitors that will enable you to produce your music properly. Um, all the things we've talked about today we carry in stock all the time at both of our Osborne Park and Cannington branches, um, and you should be able to buy any of them online at cosmic.com.au. Thanks for watching.